My name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. And this is the extended runtime fuel kit for generators that run the Sensei 744cc engine. Right now, the only one on the market that I'm aware of that uses that is the Duramax XP16000IH. However, if you look at them, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, generators in the Predator line and Duramax line that are almost identical, like the, uh, the Predator 9500 and the Duramax XP9000IH. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we see a Predator sister to this coming along very soon. Uh, at any rate, my kit comes with a uh, quick explanation that you have bought the greatest thing since sliced bread. Then in the bag of small parts is a flash drive with the video that you're watching right now. So you'll play this flash drive as you're installing it. Uh, installation on this is very simple. First step is to take off the two side covers. The side covers are held on with small bolts with an 8 millimeter head and both side covers are held on with two of these bolts. As you saw, the covers are held on with two bolts and then there are two snap pins also. So you just pop it out and then there are four tabs at the top. Okay. If you look right over here, you'll see a fuel filter and there's a hose that runs from the fuel tank to the fuel selector valve and then the hose with the filter in it goes from the fuel selector valve to the carburetor. So what I'm going to do is remove the Corbin clamp from the top of the fuel filter and to remove a Corbin clamp you simply squeeze in on the two tabs and slide it back out of the way. Now we'll make sure that the fuel selector valve is in the off position so that we don't have fuel dripping out of it. And off is with it pointing straight down to the fuel off slash storage position. In the kit, along with all the other parts, there's going to be a section of quarter inch Gates Barricade hose. You'll cut off a section of the Gates Barricade hose about one and a half inches long. If it's too long, you can always, if you cut it too long, excuse me, you can always shorten it, but if you cut it too short, you're going to have to cut out another section. Take the T connector that's included in the kit. I'm going to drip just a little bit of gasoline on this hose and make it easier to put on. One end of the uh, inch and a half hose goes onto the T connector. The other end of the inch and a half hose will go onto the uh, fuel filter. Then you'll take the stock hose and move it and put it onto this arm of the, uh, the T connector. Then we'll slide the original stock Corbin clamp. clamp the stock hose 
onto the T-connector. Then included in my kit are some white nylon hose clamps. So we're going to use these nylon hose clamps to clamp a hose section that was supplied in my kit. Incidentally, this particular generator already has its own fuel pump, and what we're doing is just reconfiguring the stock fuel pump so that it can either pull fuel from a remote tank or from the stock tank. If you come over to this side, what we're going to do is feed this hose right above the air intake area over to the other side. So there's a, an intake fan on in the front of the engine. By the air intake, I'm not talking about the air filter, which is on top. I'm talking about the air intake, which is right down here. So then you'll take the hose that we just fed across, and it'll connect to the third leg of the key fitting. If you're a little concerned about the uh, Corbin clamp that was stock on the generator, you can put one of my nylon uh, clamps in place of the, uh, the stock Corbin clamp. Because we've wound up extending this, you'll check to make sure that the hose coming off of the fuel selector valve and going into the filter and then continuing on around into the fuel pump is not kinked in any place. Then you'll come over to this side and what we're going to do is use some of the zip ties in the kit and zip tie this fuel hose to the main harness and it's going to come around and we're going to drill a hole in the front of the housing to put our fuel inlet into. You'll notice that the handlebars, and I'll call them handlebars for the purpose of this discussion, do not cover this area right here. I put the fuel fitting on this side as opposed to this side and the only reason is that I don't want people when they step on the brake stepping on the fuel fitting, or when they kick the brake to release it, kicking the fuel fitting or whatever. This wheel on this side does not have a brake, so mounting the fuel fitting right here should be a safe place. And if you look, putting it right here, it won't stick out past where the handlebars go. So I'm going to take a step drill and drill the initial hole right here. And just make sure nobody has routed any hoses or wires directly behind it. is I use a step drill for the initial hole and then I take a repairman's reamer to enlarge the hole with.
taking the hose bar, screwing it onto the back of the fuel fitting, and as it tightens down, it'll create a pinch point between these two hexes that'll grab onto the plastic casing of the generator. If the casing is just a little too thin, or if the hose bar and the fitting start to tighten up before it has created a pinch point, because they are pipe threads, you'll put the half inch washer included in the kit, and I put it on the inside because it looks nicer, and then put the hose barb and tighten it down and it, the washer will act as a shim. Always try it without the washer first. I'm just going to clean up the plastic burrs. the Teflon tape around the threads to the fuel fitting. Be very careful when you wrap the Teflon tape around it that you don't overlap the end of the thread. That you stay like this. Do not overlap like this because then when you screw the hose barb on it will shear off that piece. Truth be known, that piece will be caught in the fuel filter. However, I don't want to have too much debris in the fuel filter early on. I'd like to hope that it'll be a year or so before the fuel filter needs to be replaced. Taking a 16 millimeter deep well socket, putting it over the hose barb, and an end wrench on the uh, fuel fitting. Okay, this one definitely did not need the uh, um, half inch washer. I'm going to take this hose, and right now it's flopping loose. 
torch and slide it on over the end of the uh, hose bar. Because that's kind of a pain to get in there, I'm going to take just a little bit of oil on the dipstick. and put that on the end of the hose, which makes my life a lot easier. Okay, if you want to see it in there. I don't know if you can see it clearly. Put it on back here and just click it down one click and then it'll slide up into place and I can tighten it down the rest of the way with the pliers. Now you can see the hose clamp. Okay, we're going to take some of the zip ties included in the kit and zip tie this hose to the main harness so it doesn't go flopping around. And I'm going to trim off the tail ends of our zip ties. And while I'm at it, I'm going to trim off the tails on the factory zip ties so it doesn't look so sloppy. So this is our fuel hose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a section out and we're going to put a fuel filter in it and the arrows on the fuel filter go in the direction of fuel flow and since this is a nice easy to inspect location Then you'll take two more of the zip tie or 
hose clamps included in the kit. Put one before and one after the fuel filter. The kit is also going to come with another quick disconnect fitting and this will screw into your remote fuel tank and it comes with a Yamaha fuel hose and this hose will be used to connect the generator to the remote fuel tank and I'll cover that in the uh, demonstration video. So now we'll go ahead and put these covers back on. You notice that one side cover has two vents. That goes on this side. Last but not least, there's a set of operating instructions on a sticker that comes with the kit. I'm going to stick that to the top of the fuel tank. And because all the other stickers are right side up when you're standing on this side, I'm going to put it so that this one is right side up when you're standing at this side. And this has the instructions for operating it off of the remote tank, as well as the instructions for operating off the stock tank. As far as the stock tank, you operate it exactly the same way you did before you put my kit in. There's no changes whatsoever. In fact, the instructions for operating it off the stock tank are follow the instructions in the owner's manual. It's that simple. If you have any questions about this kit or anything like that, and you're watching this video on YouTube, please look in the description section below, and you'll see that there is a link to my website. Go to my website, and you can find out anything you would want to know. If you don't find the answer to all of your questions there, please don't hesitate to call me. That's what I'm here for, and I thank you for watching.